Hey guys, today we'll be talking about the Pollock cipher and I'll be only showing you the part where you decrypt it. And it'll be a lot more straightforward in comparison to the Morbid cipher, uh, considering that both of them engage some part of Morse code. But it's a fun one to, to know about. So here's how it's basically done. Um, you start with a series of numbers on your page, which will be your ciphertext, and then with a couple of hints saying um, what each number is going to mapped on, uh, be mapped onto in terms of Morse code. And for each uh, individual number, it's only going to be mapped onto one sign. Is that what you call it? I don't know. So it's either going to be one dash, one dot, or a space holder. Uh, so it, it will be up to you to figure out what the rest of them mean and then once you know all of them you can transfer all the um, numbers into Morse code which then you'll use your super knowledge and your memorization of the Morse code uh, to transfer it into plain text. Super easy! Okay, so here's an example for how to decode um, with Pollux. Um, as usual, we have a bunch of hints to help us along, and then there's a series of numbers that we're trying to uh, make some sense out of. So first off, as usual, we are going to uh, keep ourselves organized by making a chart to keep track of all the information that we know. So from the hints, we know that 1 is a dash, 3 is a dot, Four is a dash, six is a space holder, seven is a dot, and nine is another space holder. So now we are going to put these uh, into the uh, jumble of numbers and see what information we can get out of it. Okay, so that's kind of about it, um, and so a couple of things to take note of. First of all, here there's a double X, so we know that uh, this is going to be a whole word, and then this is the start to a new word, um, etc, etc, and then let's see. So in which case, 8 and 0 cannot um, be space holders. So we can try to see what we make out of it. Also, in that case, if these two are not space holders and it goes on, and then that means that two has to be a space holder because then the thing cannot run on for more than four positions, which, if two is going to be um, some kind of a dash or a dot, then this is going to run on forever. So we can know that. 2 is also a space holder. So then we're going to fill all the 2's in. This will be very helpful. So here's another um, break between two words. And here we go. So we can start to fill a couple of letters in. Um, so here's going to be an I. There's an A. So this is not an A. Um, let's see. And this is an N. Alrighty. Let's see. Is there anything that I leave off? No, I left off. No. All right. Okay. So here's the second step we can do. So we know that um, 8 and 0 are both not placeholders. We can start um, our trial and error. We can start with 8 being, let's say, a dot. So if 8 is a dot, that's going to be an E. And the reason why I chose 8 as a dot is that this is at, at the end of a word. and. Uh, uh, I personally believe that E would be a more common ending than T uh, in a word. So let's try it out. I can be very wrong also. So in that case, we'll just start over. And yeah, okay. So how does that help? 
Um, not really. Oh, I also forgot a seven here. Um, yeah. And then that's kind of not helping us too much. So we can go ahead and make another assumption for zero. So we can also see that here, zero is at the end. So I'm going to make another assumption that zero is also a dot. Um, I fill it in. And I'm going to kind of get a good sense here. Right? So remember that these three are together. So that runs on to be an S. You can put a little slash here to show that this is at the end of a word. You can also do that here. Dot S shine. That makes sense. Great. So basically, we are on a pretty good track. Um, and yeah. R is going to be an L dot S. Are there more zeros I can fill in? Okay. I don't think so. All right. And then the last one, so for five, we can also make an assumption that it's a dot. Just say it's a dot and see if it makes sense. So, I'm not seeing too much sense in this sentence, which means that five will not be a dot, and we can change that into a dash. Then just try to keep track of everything in here. So that's not gonna be a U. That's all the fives we got, so. Um, L, will be a P, dot is gonna be a K, Smile makes sense. Sparkle also makes sense. Shine also makes sense. So that's it. That's how you crack a Pollock cipher.